Good morning. How are you? This is Pip Coleman coming in to do uh, the Find Your Soul show for today. And uh, I hope you're feeling good. It's sunny, which is great. <laughs> it's always a bonus in the autumn time. Uh, so we are excited on Phillip Island at the moment because it is actually sunny. Yay! So welcome to the Find Your Soul show. And today we're going to be uh, finishing off our conversation about bravery, which is our topic for the month of April. And hello, Kerry, nice to see you. Welcome to the show. Say hello from wherever you're joining us today. It's, uh, it's great to have people coming in from all over the world, all over the country. And uh, as I said, today we're talking about bravery. And this week, the topic is about bravery in relationships. So uh, it's a big topic, obviously, and not something that we can cover in just 20 or 25 minutes. <laughs> but it is something that I wanted to introduce a few new, um, possibly new things for you to think about in terms of your relationships and being brave. So I guess, where to begin? <laughs> where to begin? That is the question. The um, What I was thinking about this morning as an introduction, I guess, to, to relationships is that we, we tend to idolize or idealize, I guess, people who are in relationships. Um, because as human beings, I believe we are we want to be in relationship. We we need that human interaction. We need the, the the conversation. We need the compassion. We need the hugs. We need all those things that relationship brings. And that is not just relationships as in intimate. That is all relationships. But uh, one of the things, or and one of the things that is really interesting is that we can build really strong relationships with people, uh, even if we're not in an intimate relationship. If we're single, we can actually still build strong relationships. We can be brave around our relationships, even if we're not in an intimate partnership. So, and that's something that has been a surprising thing that I've found over the last few years, have not currently been in a relationship, and having not been in a relationship for a few years now, I find it really interesting the conversations that I have around relationships and what it is that I'm willing to accept. So in terms of being brave around relationships, I wanted to talk about that whole concept of um, feeling worthy of whatever it is that you need in terms of the things that you deserve, the things that you that you feel that you um, desire in a relationship, the things that you would like to have um, coming your way, and one of the things that I noticed when I was in when I've been in relationships with, and I'm talking about intimate relationships, is that I was finding myself settling for things that were not my highest for my highest good. So I was in relationship, if you can resonate, if you resonate with this, then uh, feel free to, to comment or pop a little heart there if you're feeling like you get where I'm talk, talk, what I'm talking about. I was settling for less than what I deserved in terms of the way that I was being treated or the way that I was treating myself or the way that the interaction with that particular partner was making me feel. So as I started to do this self-development, spiritual, um, self-improvement, you know, more deep inquiry into me and what I wanted and what I needed and what my purpose was and where I was going in my life, all those seeker questions, I started to realize that I was actually settling for less than I deserved in those relationships. And so making the choice to be single 
was a brave step. Now, it's not everybody's path. It's not what everybody needs to do. And so I want to be clear about that. <laughs> uh, and it is also interesting to consider, to consider what it is that you need in terms of your relationship to step up and be more brave in that space. Be courageous in your relationships because really in essence, the relationships that you have with other people start with your relationship with you. So you are the central thing in the relationship. If things are not working for you in your relationships, then it's because something about what you're thinking about yourself or the way that you're behaving is not working in terms of your self-love, your self-relationship, your relationship with yourself. So the more that you begin to work on who you are and what you need and, and cultivating that sense of being brave and looking at what you need and where you need to go, the more that you will actually move towards a braver and more balanced relationships with other people. And that's not just your intimate relationships. I'm talking about family, work, you know, all of those um, friends, all of those things where we need to be brave in relationships. So, um, yeah, feel free to comment if you have a comment about that, uh, if you'd like to, you know, share. And um, I'm going to talk a little bit deeper about um, being brave in terms of if you're in, in any relationship, okay? So we're not just going to be talking about um, intimate relationships today. I wanted to to talk about all relationships that you might be having because whenever we have issues that come up, it's usually because there's an unresolved, something unresolved within ourselves that is needing to be addressed. So if you have an argument with somebody, if you have even just a fleeting kind of a discussion with somebody that's uncomfortable or um, something that's going on in terms of, you know, you meet someone at a shop and somebody's rude to you, or it could be a, a more deep, uh, a more, um, you know, a, a more intimate relationship, a, a more, uh, you know, DNM that you've had with somebody that really triggers you, that really sort of pushes your buttons. We to be more brave around those situations, one of the things that I really like to do is um, take on the mantra of uh, Barbara DeAngelis talks about in her book, Soul Shifts. She talks about her mantra, the Soul Shifts mantra, that's really helpful in terms of getting a bit more clear about your relationships and the way that you're interacting with other people. So she says to think about it this way, or start your day with the intention of, and this is what she says to, to work with, is to say to yourself, I'm going to see what there is to see, to feel what there is to feel, and to know what there is to know. And I wanted to break that down a little bit today because when I was re-listening to her audiobook of Soul Shifts this week, it really resonated with me around what it is to, to be brave because most people <laughs> um, want to start their day saying, I'm going to close my eyes and not look at anything that I, that I see. I'm going to squash my emotions and not feel anything. I'm going to numb myself completely. And I'm going to pretend that I don't know what's going on. I'm just going to, you know, deny that there's things happening out there in the world. So they do the complete opposite of the soul shifts <laughs> mantra. And I know that I have done that too. And it's something that we need to do in terms of being brave is honoring and accepting and and being truthful about the fact that we have not seen what we need to see and we have not felt what we needed to feel and we have not known what we need to know in lots of different circumstances, haven't we? So 
that's just a good starting point. We need to be honest about that in terms of being brave. And then when it comes to looking at it, let's be clear about how to do that. So that's one of the things that a lot of people say to me is that they go, oh, this is all very good, Pip. Like, you know, in theory, this is all very good. But how do we see what there is to see or and feel what we need to feel and know what there is to know? And that's a good question. <laughs> so the first way to do that is to do to come from that space of knowing yourself. So we need to work with, first of all, let's start with seeing what we need to see. So seeing what there is to see in the world bravely and in your life is all about coming from that space of opening your eyes and actually looking at what's happening in your life. So there are things that we might have been denying, there are things that we might not have been wanting to see, but so it's really important for us to, if we're going to move in this direction of bravery, if we're going to move in this direction of being authentic in our relationships, we need to actually see clearly what's going on. So one of the things that I like to do is I like to actually get my pen and paper out and I like to write down what it is. Answer that question, what is there to see? What do I need to see clearly in this relationship or in this job or in this um, space, whatever it is, in this friendship, in this, what do I need to see about myself? And be be honest with yourself about that. Actually, you know, write down what it is that you need to see, that you can see clearly. And so obviously some of those things that we're writing down might you might start out with things that you actually physically can see on the outside of you or on the outside of the other person um, if someone's behaving angrily or someone's behaving you know sneakily or someone's behaving fearfully you might see the outside first so you might go okay what i see is somebody being fearful to, towards me or what i see is myself being afraid or worried or anxious or depressed or whatever it is that you can see yourself doing. Then we need to think about um, or write about, I guess, or get, get clear about when you are seeing, it's not just about what you see on the outside. It's about what you see um, going on in your mind. What, are, what is it that you're actually seeing in your mental movies? What are you seeing in your imagination? What are you making up in your head? <laughs> because a lot of the times, the things that are actually going on, in fact, out there in the world, are not actually what's going on in your head. You might actually be thinking and um, you know, seeing things in your mind that are not actually what's going on in fact. So that's where you can write down, okay, what am I thinking? What am I thinking about? I'm thinking, you know, the fact of the matter is that this person's being, you know, angry towards me, but I'm thinking that it's blah, 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 blah. So the facts are that the person is doing this action and the actual, um, you know, what you're thinking in your head is, oh my God, they hate me and blah, 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 blah. You know, and there's a whole story that comes out. So seeing clearly is not just about, noting what's happening on the outside. It's also about what's happening on the inside. So that's the first step. Then we need to look at the feeling part, the to feel what there is to feel. So, and you might find that some of the thoughts in your head have already, you've already started writing down the things that you feel because as soon as we start thinking thoughts that don't serve us, as soon as we start thinking thoughts that are scary or um, angry or you know whatever it is they will spiral into fit we will create those feelings in ourselves so to feel what there is to feel it's brave to step into that space where you feel what there is to feel so you can write those things down too um, it helps to um, take a few breaths if you need to close your eyes and go in inward you know and it really helps to close your eyes, I find, when you're doing feeling type investigation and being brave about your feelings, it's really important to not 
look outside of yourself, but to look within. So that is why we close our eyes. Um, I find that really is really helpful when I'm doing my work in terms of um, feeling what I need to feel. And so that way you can actually write down what it is that you're feeling about the situation or about the person or about the relationship, whatever it is that you're investigating in that moment that you'd like to feel. So it's, and the honoring of your feelings is really important because one of the things that can happen when we have these situations is that we squash the feelings down, the true feelings, and we put a big smiley face on and we pretend that everything's okay. But here's the thing, that's not gonna last for very long. And then it's, thing, it's just gonna bubble under the surface, those real feelings, and there's nowhere for them to escape. So it's really important that we, that we honor those feelings. And if you are familiar with tapping, the EFT tapping that we've done before, where we tap on the meridian points of the face and the, and the body, you could do some tapping um, while you're discovering those feelings. Um, if you need help with that, obviously you can obviously contact me and we can work through this process together um, in, a, in a coaching session. And that way you can feel a bit safer or you could go to a counsellor um, to help you with this as well. Because sometimes when we do start to address the feelings, it can be a bit overwhelming. And that's where the bravery comes in because we are stepping into being honest with ourselves, and being brave. So we're feeling what we need to feel we're writing that down and we're actually allowing ourselves to feel those feelings. And the tapping, the, the EFT tapping can be really helpful in terms of letting you see and honor the feelings and then letting them go, dissolving them. That doesn't mean that you're not gonna still feel those feelings again, maybe tomorrow or the next day, but it does allow you to explore this whole concept of being brave, feeling what you feel without the um, intensity of the emotion because the tapping helps to reduce the intensity of the emotion so that you can be um, clear and mindful about it without being overwhelmed by the emotion, particularly if it's um, a relationship or a situation that is really activated or triggered you because of past, past things that have happened. So we've seen what we need to see we have, have feel, felt what we need to feel. And the third thing that I find really, I think is really interesting is the third step is to know what there is to know about that situation. So this is where we're talking about the, the, the mindfulness, the, the thinking around it, the mental sort of processing that comes in when we are working through a situation. So being knowing what there is to know is that's where we talk about the cognitive stuff. That's where we talk about the thoughts that you're having. That's where we, we really need to um, get in touch with our higher self. We need to get in touch with our soul. And that is, that is where this automatic writing process, where you write down a prompting question like, I'm going to see what there is to see, what is there to see? And you write until you can't, then you're done. And then what is there to feel? You know, what do I need to feel? And you write, and then what is there to know? What do I need to know? Because once we've actually seen what there is to see, once we actually um, feel what there is to feel, there's a knowing that comes from that. The, it's a natural progression once you've actually honoured and spoken or written the truth down about what's actually going on, you can start to know more fully what it is that you need to know. So I hope that makes sense. I, I, for me, it really resonated when I was listening to Barbara DeAngelis talking about this on her in her book, as I said, in Soul Shifts. And it made a lot of sense because I thought it was really important that we talk about that in the this conversation around relationships and being brave. So if you've had some ahas, <laughs> please feel free to write a little comment and let me know how you're feeling um, or what you're seeing or what you're knowing right now um, because it's obviously helpful for me to know where you're at and then we can we can move forward 
as well and for you to move forward as well it's really important to have those aha moments and dig a little deeper so one of the people that i really like while you're thinking about what you're going to say <laughs> one of the people that i really like who looks at things and is very brave when it comes to looking at the your relationships or anything in your life is the wonderful Brene Brown. That's Brene Brown, and this is her book, The Gifts of Imperfection. And uh, one of the things that's wonderful about this is that she's done research for a very long time around the topics of shame, vulnerability, being brave, um, power. Um, she really does dig deeply and dive into those topics in an amazing way that is really relatable and the 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 tagline of this book is let go of who you think you're supposed to be and embrace who you are um, your guide to a wholehearted life which I love because there are gifts in our imperfection you know when we feel um, not brave <laughs> so when we're feeling when we're feeling scared when we're feeling unsure of ourselves there's a gift in that. There is something in that that needs to be addressed. And one of the things that I was talking about with um, a client the other day was that whole concept that um, fear that's rising up or an emotion that's rising up is an indication that your higher self or your soul does not feel that way. So it's our ego, it's our it's our personality that is, you know, doing that questioning thing and making us feel bad. But our higher self, the very fact that you are feeling a, a negative emotion like fear, uh, for example, or not being brave is an indication that your higher self doesn't feel that way. So if you can think about it in terms of you are, you are a soul and you that is your essence. The essence of you is a soul. So if you can remember that in the moments where you're feeling not very brave, where you're not feeling um, safe, where you're not feeling um, powerful, where you're feeling, where you're not feeling hopeful, all of those things, if you can remember in that moment, if I'm feeling this feeling, that means that my soul doesn't feel that way that i actually have the i actually have within me the ability to be hopeful to be brave to be powerful to be courageous and to step into that power and that is something that will shift you out of the feelings that might be um, keeping you stuck so <laughs> that's been lots of lots of information, lots of information. Um, and so I hope that, that um, some of that resonated with you today and feel free, as I say, to comment below. Um, the other thing that I wanted to share with you, and I've mentioned this book before, is the wonderful Conversations with God series with Neil Donald Walsh. This is the third book in the series. And one of the things that he um, puts in here, and I've mentioned that before with regard to relationships, is his marriage statements that he and his wife did to instead of vows. So they, they wrote their own and they were like really empowering, empowering vows around um, their relationship and how they wanted to move forward in their relationship, in their marriage. And so it... It was, it's really interesting and I wanted to read a little bit of these vows to you because I thought you might find it interesting. So um, <laughs> this, is, this is where it begins. So I'm just going to read a little bit for you to finish up today. This is the Ceremony of Roses in which Nancy and Neil share their understandings and commemorate that sharing. Now Nancy and Neil have told me that it's your firm understanding that you are not entering into this marriage for reasons of security, that the only real security is not in owning or possessing, not in being owned or possessed, not in demanding or expecting, and not even in hoping that what you think you need in life will be supplied by another, 
but rather in knowing that everything you need in life, all the love, all the wisdom, all the insight, all the power, all the knowledge, all the understanding, all the nurturing, all the compassion and all the strength resides within you. And that you are not marrying the other in hopes of getting these things, but in hopes of giving these gifts that the other might have them in even greater abundance. Is that your firm understanding? And then they said, I do. <laughs> and they, it was, it's, there's a long, it's a longer conversation than that, but it's in Conversations with God. It starts on page 63 in book three. If you'd like to read the full marriage statement, it's so cool that it's really, really good to reframe the way that we think about relationships, to be brave in terms of how we are with ourselves and how we are in terms of what we expect of other people. Because the more that we can come back to ourselves and look at that power and stay within our power and be aligned in our center, the more that we can actually have relationships that are empowering, no matter what level that relationship is. So a little bit of bravery around relationships for you this week. If you would like to join me next week on Finding Your Soul, on the Finding Your Soul show, we are going to be moving into a new topic for the month of May. And that topic is going to be about telling your soul's truth. So what are you not telling the truth about? Um, how can you tell your truth lovingly and bravely and safely? How can you be more authentic? So we're going to talk about that for the month of May, which is going to be cool. And if you are wanting to get some assistance around the topic that we had today, you'd like to do some coaching, feel free to get in touch with me. Uh, and I'm happy to, to do that. I have a wonderful new program that I'm putting together that's, that's almost like it's, it's close to being ready to launch is the, the, the divine alignment code is almost ready, my coaching program. I'm so excited to be launching that very shortly so that I can help people to really get aligned with their divine soul and know themselves more deeply. That's exciting. And the Find Your Soul Journal is almost ready to come out too. So you can pre-order at pipcoleman.com backslash store. I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Take good care and be brave, my fellow souls, and I'll see you soon. Bye.